International Automobile Industry Exhibition kicked off Monday with new and exciting debuts and technologies. And my colleague Xia Chen uh, is in Shanghai right now. Hi there, Xia Chen. You are a frequenter to the Shanghai Auto Show. What's big this year? Hello, Guaxing, and hello from Shanghai. Yes, e-cars. The segment is the hottest topic at this year's Shanghai Auto Show. Of course, uh, e-car sales in the first quarter uh, contributed uh, the most to the overall auto sales here in China. However, if you compare with the pre-pandemic levels, the overall market is still pretty weak uh, because the uh, growth was pretty minimal if you compare with 2019 Q1 and 2021 Q1. But we did see a rebound uh, compared to the first quarter of 2020. So. The market is banking on the e-car segment to see more growth. And of course, I'm right now at the booth of uh, Expo, you know, the emerging automaker here in China, and they produce a lot of smart and electric-driven cars. However, their shares, uh, along with shares of, you know, Neo and Li Auto, have seen some uh, drops in the U.S. recently because analysts say uh, Huawei is coming into the market. Uh, Huawei is not a car maker, though. They say they will be. Uh, an auto supplier with smart technologies, but analysts do see, uh, you know, harder competitions in this area. That's why uh, shares of Neo, uh, Xpeng, and Li Auto are suffering. Uh, but I asked Xpeng CEO He Xiaopeng yesterday about the heating up competition, and he said he welcomes this type of competition because the sooner it comes, uh, the sooner they will know their advantage and disadvantage, and they can reposition themselves for the future to, you know, cater to the market demand and produce the best product that actually will sell. Uh, meanwhile, in the general market, for example, the mass auto market, uh, a lot of you know, traditional automakers, the new world of automakers, are also going electric. For example, Ford, they have already started receiving pre-orders of Mustang, Mach-E, you know, the super sports car, the American muscle cars, electric version, and that's a very exciting news. And I caught up with their uh, China president and CEO uh, to talk about their China sales outlook and, of course, what could, what, you know, what could be the major challenges going forward as the world still battles you know, the supply chain disruption amid the COVID-19? Take a listen. Now, moving forward, I think the demand is very strong in China, okay? Especially, uh, especially on upgrading and uh, high-end um, luxury and electrification. Demand is exceptionally strong. Uh, this year, I think the unknown is how fast the world can recover in COVID-19, mm -hmm. both in, ter in terms of vaccination and traveling and inter international travels. And uh, secondly, we do have a industry-wide global uh, supply shortage on chips. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty in terms of how long that uh, supply cho shortage on chips will last. Uh, we're all working closely with, uh, with our suppliers to manage that. Well, that was Chen Anning, China president and CEO of Ford Motors. Uh, and meanwhile, I also spoke to several, you know, ultra luxury brands. They are typically considered uh, kind of late to the electric game. However, some of them uh, do offer some uh, electric cars, at least some hybrids. And for, you know, the super luxury cars, for example, you know, Lamborghini and uh, Rolls Royce, these, you know, traditional high-end premium cars, uh, they are also going electric because the market trend is there. And I caught up with their executives and uh, take a listen. Uh, Rosa always want to embrace the new technology. I think you talk about the alternative fuel technology for our future Rolls Royce. Um, we definitely want to go this uh, direction. We already officially announced in the next decade we will go full electric for all the Rolls Royce products in the future. Uh, we are not consider hybrid we only consider the, we call the, BEV, the battery electro vehicles. Even back in 2012, when people still very much prefer the combustion engine, for us it's a V12 uh, combustion engine, then we already introduced the electric car based on Phantom. So currently our performance is strongly driven by uh, Cullinan and uh, newly launched the Ghost. Uh, our order bank is very strong, so we are optimistic about the remaining months in 2021. When it's made of uh, electrification, of course, uh, for a super sport car brand, uh, it's uh, a difficult exercise because, uh, in terms of design, because uh, you have to fight against the weight, the weight distribution, in order to have a car that has the 
perfect handling, perfect performance, and so best drivability and best emotion. Within next month, uh, within probably mid of May, uh, you will hear what Lamborghini will be able to do in the next 10 years uh, in terms of electrification. So the way Lamborghini sees the future of electrification for super sport cars and super SUV. Well, Guaixing, generally the sentiment towards, you know, the China sales outlook for 2021 is pretty high and positive because China still leads the post-pandemic economic recovery in the world. And for China, people are generally looking for bigger cars like SUVs. I know, Guaixing, you have two kids, so you might be looking for something like seven-seat SUVs, and you are definitely one of their target, you know, clients. So maybe next year we can come to the auto show together, Guaixing. Oh, that's right, Xia I can see that electric vehicle is definitely the top choice in the future because the country is really doubling down on green, low-carbon developments. Well, thanks for all that information. Our reporter Xia and exactly. Shanghai Auto Show.